Good evening. Praise God. Will everybody please stand for prayer? Brother Henry, would you open up us open up in prayer? Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Let's turn to page 452. Turn back to page 409, please. 409.
Do we have any testimonies tonight? Any testimonies? How about prayer requests? Any prayer requests? For the preacher, for the word that goes forth. And Reverend Jerome brings forth the word and power, anointed. Yes? Happy birthday, Cyrus. Any other prayer requests? Um, okay, go ahead, Henry. Yes, I'd like a prayer request that it would be God's will that we end this infectious thing that's going on. Because I, I can see the amount of infected in the next couple of weeks. I got some very important stuff coming up, and I hate to have to tell you because it'll go back to about five or six months. I need it done now. So I pray that this, nobody else. Nobody else will catch a cold. Amen. I'm in on that one with you. It's going to take a lot of fervent prayer, though, for all of us to pray, corporate pray. Uh, we want to pray also for the family, the smaller family. We want to pray for uh, everyone who um, usually comes here and aren't able to because of the, uh, the COVID. We want to pray for... Uh, all the donors, we want to pray for everybody who went to the hospital, everyone who tested positive, that they're healed. Any other prayer requests? Yes. I want to remember the popers. The who? The popers. The popers. Amen. Anyone else? Any more prayer requests? How about for our families, yes. unsaved loved ones? Yes. God keep a hedge of protection around each and every one that we care for. Brother Ledger? Definitely Louisiana, it seems like they're going to have a terrible night up there with this hurricane. So. Yes, yes. Yeah. Louisiana, and uh, I know in that area that it's, I think it's below sea level or something. Yeah. Or somewhere at sea level where, you know, it could flood easily. So we all, want to pray that that. All our first responders that are going up there yes. after, the, after the mass, you know, that they uh, are, are safe. You know. Yes, yes, definitely the first responders. They're brave. Yeah. They go into harm's way. Second time, go ahead. And last, uh, consecration of the sage and the anointing of the pastor. Anointing of the pastor, amen. Any more prayer requests? Amen. Will everybody please stand for prayer? Brother Steve, would you pray for us, please? Lord God of heaven and earth, we praise you tonight and we bless you tonight, Father. We thank you for the privilege of being in your house again tonight, Lord God. We just continue to invite your presence in. Yes, Lord. Say we need you desperately, yes, Lord, Lord God. Each one of us here needs you, thank Father. Thank you, Father. We ask that you move among your people, Lord God. Yes, That you Lord. change hearts for you, Lord God, for those that don't know you yet, Lord God. And for those that know you and serve you, Lord God, minister to our hearts and our needs. Yes, Father, Lord. God, and we'll give you all the praise and all your glory. Lord. Yes, Father. Let your anointing be on Brother Jerome. Hallelujah. Message, Lord. Open up our hearts and ears that we're yes, able Father. to hear tonight, Father God. Thank you, Father. And Lord, I thank you that you're a God that cares and you're a God that listens and you're a God that answers prayer. Yes, You've Lord. heard each request that was made here tonight, Lord God. And Lord, you know the silent request of each heart here. Lord yes, God. Father. You know each one here, Lord God. You know all about it, Lord. And I just ask that you intervene in each life here, Lord God. And Father, we just ask that you're with the people in the path of that horrible storm, Lord yes, God. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, God, Father, make a way somehow, Father God. Please. Oh, Lord. And Lord, make a way for the families of those that have lost men in Afghanistan. Lord yes, God. Lord. We pray for the Christians in Afghanistan, yes, Lord, Lord God. And Father God, we ask that you glorify yourself. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can I have my please?
gerade stehen. All right, let's turn to page 590, 
love that song. Every time I, th I think, every time I sing that song, I think a time when I grew up, when I grew up, I grew up with two brothers and two sisters, and there's always arguing and bickering, and sometimes I'd be like, oh, I just want peace. Then I got married, and I had a wife with kids, and then I was like, oh, I wish I could have peace from my arguing. <laughs> and sometimes when I get away, if I take the bus going to work and I put my headphones on, I'm like, oh, peace. I'm telling you, I'll take peace over all the money in the world. All the money in the world doesn't mean anything if you're aggravated, but once you have peace, man, it is the greatest thing on earth, a peace of mind. <laughs> I think some people can relate with that. <laughs> So right now, prepare your hearts for the word today. I believe it is anointed, and I've been looking forward to it. We had a great service earlier today, and uh, I believe we're going to have another great one. The word of God is always great. So without further ado, my Thank you, brother. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Uh, once again, it is so nice to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. And... It is, uh, it is most rewarding that, that the Lord can call upon us and, and have us come together and, uh, and seek his face and to, and to receive what he has for each and every one of us. And, uh, and tonight, I, I just want to share with you uh, something that we speak about constantly. And uh, it is important for us to, to really understand the, the, the essentialness of, of what I'm going to speak on tonight. Uh, I'm going to speak on the presence of the Lord. And uh, we can do nothing without his presence. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. So, and uh, I have a lot of scripture tonight. So I want us to understand and know what the Lord has to say about his presence and what his presence affords for each and every one of us. So, so grab your Bibles and turn to the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus. And uh, turn to chapter 33. The book of Exodus, chapter 33, and I'm going to start at verse 9. The book of Exodus, chapter 33, verse 9. I'm sorry, I'm going to start at verse 8. And it came to pass, when Moses went out unto the tabernacle, that all the people rose up and stood every man, at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord talked with Moses. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door. And all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. It's amazing what the presence of the Lord would do. It would have you stay longer than you intended on staying. Praise God. And Moses said unto the Lord, See thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, and that I may know thee that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Praise God. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? 
And God said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. Oh, gracious Father, we thank thee this evening, Lord. We thank thee for thy blessed word, Father. We thank thee for this solemn assembly tonight, Lord. And we need thy presence, Lord. That same presence your word has just spoken to us about. Come, Lord, one more time. Have thine blessed way. And for all that you do, Father, we give thee the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God said... My presence shall go with thee. What a difference. What a difference God's presence makes. I just want to give us a little uh, little background information. This is the scene of the promise in the life of Moses. Now Moses is facing a dilemma. The dilemma is Israel's sin. And, and chapter 32, verse 32, 32 deals with that. And also Moses is going to be dealing with some disappointment. Chapter 32, verses 34 through 35 deals with that. And he is discouraged. Chapter 33, 12 through 13 deals with that. So what it comes down to, the source of the promise The source of the promise comes directly from God. In verse 14, God said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. The security of the promise. God keeps his word. Verse 14, once again, I will give thee rest. The sign of his promise, the ark of God, represents... The Ark of the Covenant represents God's provision, God's protection, God's promise, God's presence, God's power, God's peace, God's praise. What more do you need? The presence of God offers all those things and much more. Much more. What is the significance? Of God's promise. Moses responds in verse 15. And he said unto him. If thy presence go not with me. Carry us not up hence. Why would Moses make such a statement? Moses recognized. That that God's presence. Is an essential presence. In essence, let's bring it to what we can understand. If you're going to make bread, you must have dough. If you're going to fly, it is essential that you have a plane. If you're going to fish, it is essential that you have bait. If you're going to think, you must have a brain. So some of us shouldn't think. No, I'm on it. I apologize. If you're going to eat, you must have food. His presence is essential in the Christian life. You cannot succeed on your own. Scriptural victory is not us but him. Essential to know success in the Christian church, Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst. God also says, show me thy glory. When we call upon the name of the Lord, when we, when we, when we seek the presence of the Lord, he is showing us his glory. He is letting us know that he is there, that he has heard our cry. 
And when he comes, he's letting us know that he, he has come to give us help. He has come to relieve our burdens. He has come to give us direction. He has come to show us our way. He has come to light the path thereon we travel. He has come to get us to heaven. He has come because we sought him and we need him. Essential to know success in the Christian battle. Exodus 17, 11 tells us, and it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let it down his hand, Amalek prevailed. God's presence is exhilarating. Luke 19, 37 through 40. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that he had seen, that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory and the highest. And some of the Pharisees from amongst the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Praise God. Amen. There's a power in his, essence, in his presence. Amen. There's a joy. That, that works up in your soul. Your heart is encouraged. God's presence is an exalting presence. Psalm 1611 tells us, Thou wilt show me the path of life, and thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Joy is a Hebrew word that means to leap, spend with pleasure. The source of joy. Joy is a product of the Holy Ghost. Galatians 5 and 22 talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. The substance of joy. There is a moral joy. Romans 5 and 1 tells us, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Everything. Everything hinges on the presence of the Lord. Amen. The spirituality of joy. It comes from God himself, from his promises, from the gospel, from the prosperity of Christ's kingdom, and from thoughts of our future state. First Peter 1 and 8, Peter calls it joy unspeakable and full of glory. Who does not want that joy? Who does not want that joy? If you don't have Christ, you can't have that joy. You can't have that future. You won't fully understand his glory. You won't have victory. God's presence is an encompassing presence. Psalm 139, 7 and 10 declares... Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. <laughs> Friends, I'm telling you, you can never go anywhere God has not already been. <laughs> so no matter your circumstance, no matter your trial, no matter your tribulation, God has the answer. God knows the answer. He's already been there. You're not on that island by yourself. He sees you. He knows you. He has even gone to hell. 
to the lower parts of the earth to announce his victory after Calvary. You can never go anywhere that God cannot go. Jonah found that to be true. God is omnipresent. God is everywhere. You hear me? Everywhere. When you find yourself in your closet and you turn off the light, God is there. What you do in the dark, he sees in the light. You cannot escape the presence of the Lord. His eyes are never closed. He never slumbers, nor does he sleep. He is ever present. Someone asked a little, girl, little child, why is there only one God? The child responded by saying, because God fills every place and there is no room for another one. Praise God. <laughs> Pray how true that is. There is no room for another one. <laughs> we don't need another one. And the Bible clearly tells us there isn't another one. God's presence is an emancipating presence, is a freeing presence. Isaiah 6, 3 and 9. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. And his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bared them and carried them all the days of old. Romans 8 and 21 tells us, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. 2 Corinthians 3 and 17. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Praise God. John 8 and 32, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John 8 and 36, if the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. It's emancipating. It's liberty. It's freedom. The God's presence is an enriching presence. Acts 3 and 19, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Refresh literally means to recover your breath. John 70, 38 tells us, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. What does it take? There's three ingredients. A heart that seeks. Luke 11, 9 and 10. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Jeremiah 29 and 13. And ye shall seek me and find me. When ye shall search for me with all your heart. A heart that seeks. Matthew 5 and 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they shall be filled. Promises. Glorious. Glorious promises. When a man has set out to find God. He must Find him or die. <laughs> Those are your only two options. When you seek for something, either you find it or you don't. And if you don't find God, you die. You die. It's simple. Number two, we must have a will that yields. Isaiah 57 and 15. For well, thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity. Whose name is holy? I dwell in the high and holy place. With him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. To revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Plain. How do we come to God? A humble spirit. A contrite heart. 
No pride. No pride. Number three, a mind that rests. Isaiah 30 and 15. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall be ye saved, shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, and ye would not. And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you. And therefore will he be exalted, and that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. The Bible clearly teaches us that we're to be anxious for nothing. We're to worry about anything. That we're to wait on the Lord. And the presence, and the presence of God is our haven. That's where we find rest. That's our refuge. Without the presence of God, there is nothing, there is nothing we can do. There is nothing we can attain spiritually. We must seek him in spirit and in truth. We must call upon his name. He that believeth on me shall be saved. And in that salvation comes the presence of the Lord. We can't have one without the other. When Jesus talks about he the vine and we're the branches, Without us being connected to Jesus, we can't live. Without the power source, we can't live. Without electricity, we can't have physical light. Without Jesus, we can't have spiritual light. And if we don't have Jesus, we won't be able to personally experience his presence. We have to know his presence for ourselves. Now sinners, sinners can receive the, the overflow, yes. We all can find ourselves in his presence. But what you want is to be in his presence. <laughs> There's a major difference. In his presence. You know he is in you. He is working in you. He is working through you. He is, he is touching your heart. He is touching your mind. He's giving you guidance. He's giving you understanding. He's giving you wisdom. He's teaching you the road to take. He's teaching you the, the path to travel. He's showing you who you should be with and who you shouldn't be with. The presence of the Lord. Moses recognized if God wasn't going to go with him, he didn't want to take another step. He didn't want to go. He did not want to go. And that should be each and every one of us. If you can't take God with you, don't go. Don't go. And if you have that mindset, if God won't go, you shouldn't go. Amen. If you handle that mindset, you will never sin. If God won't go there, don't you go. My God is a holy God. My God is a pure God. My God is a sinless God. And he's not going to take you to sin. No. 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 The presence. The presence. 
best protection. And we pray for that. Wrap thy loving arms about me, Lord. Hold me, keep me, secure me, lift me, Lord. May I be like the Apostle John. May I rest my head upon thy breast. Is there, more, is there a more secure place than that? The presence. The presence. That's why we pray. God, help us. Be with us. Touch us. Bless us. And God wants to bless us. But we'd have to seek him with our whole heart. With our whole heart. Let's not... Let's not waste, let's not waste the time that God gives us. When the Lord is speaking to you, when the Lord is speaking to you, take full advantage of that. Because you don't know when he will speak to you again. And the Bible clearly teaches us, we cannot, we, you cannot decide when you want to come to God. It's not your choice. It takes the touch of the Holy Ghost, the presence of God, the Spirit of God to lead us. No man come unto the Father except by Jesus. No man. So when you find yourselves in the presence of the Lord, speak to him at that moment. Speak. Let him know that you're interested. Let him know that you want to be helped. Let him know that you need him. Let him know. Let him know. So he can provide for you, so he can protect you. I thank you so much for your kind attention. I thank you so much for your kind attention. And I can see all eyes upon me. And I challenge you. All those eyes that are upon me, put them upon Jesus. Put them on Jesus. And watch Jesus do to you that I can't do. Put him on Jesus. Put him on Jesus. I challenge you. But I appreciate you watching. I appreciate the eye contact. I do. Let Jesus. The eyes are the portals to the soul. Let Jesus look into your eyes. Let Jesus look into your eyes. Is there anyone out there this evening who would like to, would like to meet Jesus tonight? Anyone, anybody, whatever your need may be, whatever the need may be. If you don't do it here, find some quiet time, find a quiet place, call upon the name of the Lord. Seek him while he still can be found. Seek him. Seek him. You know the condition of the world. You know what's going on. Death is around us every day. Every day. Death can strike us at any moment. Any moment. Any moment. Amen. Amen. Let's stand for prayer. Father God, once again, we thank you. 
We thank you for your love, your grace, your mercies, Father. We thank you for thy blessed Son, Jesus Christ. We, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you for your help, Lord. And blessed Father, I saw interest in the eyes of some of the people, Lord. But you know who they are, Father. And I just ask, Lord Jesus, some way, somehow, that you touch them, Lord, in a way that they will come to you, Lord. Have thine blessed way with us, Lord. Grant us protection throughout this night, Lord. Awaken us afresh and anew, Lord, that we may seek you in spirit and in truth. And for all that you do, blessed Father, we give thee the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And amen.